What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great day today. In today's video, we're going to be covering the final Madden 23 realistic sliders for your franchise modes. Now, yes, I know I have come out with two other videos on this, one for XP and I believe one for gameplay. And I think I also did a gameplay 2.0 video, but this is the final one. The sliders are going to be pretty different from other gameplay, I guess, slider videos that we've done before. Throughout the year, I like to typically kind of adjust the Madden gameplay sliders to the actual game because EA always comes out with all these new updates that change the game. And so the gameplay is different um, and we need to uh, properly kind of adjust for that. So in this video, we are going to be covering all that you need to know about the XP sliders, the gameplay sliders. I'm going to be showing you guys all that type of stuff. This is going to be the final Madden video of the year for Madden 23, unless we visit Madden 23 in the future. I, I, it might happen. We don't know. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get into the video. All I ask of you guys is please do make sure to hit that thumbs up button. We're going to go for uh, eight likes on this video. Make sure to comment down below if you guys do like this type of content, mainly Madden slider videos. And um, yeah, if you have any recommendations, or anything, put that down in the comments and make sure to subscribe. Uh, we're trying to reach 1000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're almost at 400 right now. So 1000 subscribers would be amazing. But with that being said, Let's get in to some sliders. Okay, so here we are. We are in the homepage for my Madden 23 franchise mode. Um, now, what we want to do, obviously, we have the news here, we have the league, and then we also have options. You want to go to options, and then you want to go to franchise settings. And as you see here, we have two tabs, XP sliders, and then we have gameplay sliders. Now, for the league settings, we don't really need to cover that right now, but we do want to cover the gameplay sliders. So. Like I said before, um, these Madden 24 or Madden 23 gameplay sliders are slightly altered. Um, I've kind of built on what I've done with the sliders in previous videos, just made some slight adjustments to the sliders to make it a little bit more realistic based off of Madden updates. Because as everybody knows, when EA, when EA updates the game, the gameplay changes. You're never gonna have a Madden where the gameplay is the same at the beginning of the year, where it's at the, end at the end of the year. So these sliders are appropriately adjusted to how the game plays at the end of the Madden 23 cycle. Uh, now the first thing that we have here, which is QB accuracy, I have it at 52 out of 100. I found that I have a 99 overall quarterback and he was still missing some things that he shouldn't miss. Obviously you want a quarterback who realistically, he's going to miss passes occasionally, even if he is one of the best. Patrick Mahomes is not 100%. Drew Brees in his prime was never 100%. He was close, but he was never there. And so 52 out of 100 is perfect. Pass blocking, we have it 62 out of 100. Pass blocking in this game still is just so terrible. Um, so I boosted it all the way up to 62. If you really think that you need to, you can even probably boost it up to 65 or 70. Uh, 62 for me seems to be a really good spot because yes, your tackles will give up sacks, but the pocket, the offensive line, they're gonna hold blocks a little bit better than they did with the default sliders. Now, wide receiver catching, I didn't really do too much with this. Wide receiver catching overall is pretty good, so it's at 52. Run blocking seems to be pretty decent, depending on how good of an offensive line you do have. I do have one of the better ones from my experience with playing this franchise in particular. So I did have it at 52. If you have a worse offensive line, I would honestly boost it up to maybe 55 or 54. Um, any higher, even, even if you want, but 52 is a pretty good starting point. Looking at the fumbles, I saw in the comments from my last gameplay sliders video that the higher you go on the fumble rate, that, that literally means that that's how often they're going to fumble. So if you put it up to 75, they're going to fumble a lot more than if you put it down to 72. Um, typically, running backs in Madden don't fumble too, too much. Um, so I have it at 72 right now. I know it seems very, very high, but so far I have I've had multiple running backs in my franchise. And they've only usually fumbled maybe like twice a season, if that. Sometimes they won't even fumble at all. So I think 72 is way, way better um, than what I had before when it was at 75. The pass defense reaction time we're going to have at 45. That seemed to be pretty good. Interceptions. The AI does not know how to pick it off if they're on your team. And so what I had to do is boost it all the way up to 35. This way, yes, like the AI isn't going to get picked off every time, but... The cornerbacks that are on your team will actually be able to hopefully pick the ball when it's literally right in their hands. What I saw with the old sliders is that the corners would literally go to play the ball and they could they just couldn't catch the ball. It would just drop on the like drop on the ground and it resulted in my seasons being a lot more like ton of sacks but not a whole lot of interceptions so my corners never were able to upgrade into like superstars or x-factors. Having it at 35 is a pretty good starting point for you. Hopefully now 
yes, like the corner is not gonna be able to pick everything off because that's not realistic, but they should pick more things off than they did with my previous sliders. Looking at the pass coverage, we have it at 49. Tackling, we have it at 55. Um, now, when you look at the CPU skill, the CPU skill in general seemed to be pretty good with my old sliders, but I did make a couple of changes. So with the QB accuracy, I did boost it up a couple to 42. I felt like some quarterbacks were just missing way too much when they shouldn't have been, so I boosted it up a little bit. Pass blocking, we have it at 23. The pass blocking, I know it seems low, but it's really good for the AI because AI, for some reason, their pass blocking is just so insane compared to the uh, user blocking. So 23 seems low, but it works really, really well. It seems to be pretty realistic. If you wanted to, you could probably put it up to 25, but I like 23 the best. Wide receiver catching, we have at 47 out of 100. Uh, wide receivers with the AI, they seem to be catching a lot of things. Like, yes, they're going to make the occasional drop, but 47 seems to be the sweet spot for me. Run blocking, I left at 49. Just as a default, run blocking has been pretty, pretty insane with the default slider. So I just took it down a couple notches to 49. It seems to be working pretty well. If you feel that the AI just doesn't get any blocks when they're, when they're actually running the ball, you could boost it up to 53. Right now, mine is at 49, though. Fumbles for the AI, it's at 77, so yes, they're going to fumble. I did put it up a little bit just because the AI doesn't fumble at all. The only person that I've seen fumble is the quarterback. If you hit stick a player, they're not going to fumble. It's maybe happened a couple times per season. It's Madden. If you hit stick a player, they should be able to fumble, so I put it all the way up to 77. You're not going to get too many fumbles, but it's going to be more of a realistic amount. The pass defense reaction time for the CPU skills at 45. Interception to put at 18. Yes, I know it seems really low, but once again, in Madden 23, the AI CPU, when it comes to interceptions, they will pick everything. And so, yes, they're going to drop a lot more than they usually should, but it makes it more realistic because that way, if you have a really good quarterback, he's not going to get, you know, 25 interceptions in a season. It's going to actually bring it down to like 12 or 15. Um, and it seems to be working really well. Pass coverage, I put this at 42. The AI does seem to be covering really, really well. Um, it really, I did see there was a nice gap between the wide receiver and the corner separation. So I thought pass coverage was really good with this 42 slider. If you need to adjust it up or down, absolutely go for it. But I think 42 for me, I haven't really touched it all year. I'm not going to, it's worked really well. Tackling, um, obviously when you have a running back, you wanna make sure that your good running backs stand out from your bad running backs. Good at running backs will break tackles if he's like, you know, if you draft a running back that's 78 overall, but he has a lot of potential, he's 22 years old, he's going to show his ability to break tackles. If he's just, you know, 22-year-old, normal dev type of running back, he's not going to be able to do that. With the tackling for at 48, the AI will tackle appropriately, but also the guys that will bounce tackles do bounce tackles, and it's really nice. Now, the one thing that I really tried to make an emphasis on was the special team sliders. I haven't really changed these from the previous video, so if you guys want to skip this part, absolutely can. I'm just going to go ahead and cover them again, though, and kind of explain them for you guys. So, the field goal power, when I originally did this, I based it all off the best kicker, because I was like, if the best kicker can kick this far, this is how far, like, this is absolutely how far they should be able to kick. I was using Justin Tucker. He has an absolutely insane leg. He kicked, I think, a 66 field goal against Detroit couple of years ago so that's what i was basing it off of i found that in his prime he was able with 53 slider he was able to kick a 62 yard field goal and i was like that is perfect that is good i tried it with other kickers right after that they couldn't make it it was reasonably so because justin tucker was a 90 these kickers were like an 85 or an, uh, or an 80 they are usually if you have a really good kicker they're gonna be able to kick like 60 yards if you have a kicker that's like an 80 overall or an 85 overall you're looking more at the 52 yard range to 56 yards range and uh, it really puts an emphasis on special teams that like yes you need a good kicker to actually get these extra points and make sure that they're accurate hence why i also have the field goal accuracy um once again everything was balanced off the best kicker so if you don't have a really good kicker and he's missing kicks it's realistic because really good kickers they aren't going to miss kicks they're going to be super accurate but if your kicker isn't good then yes, like with these sliders, it's going to be the most realistic. They're, it's going to be harder to make field goals with them because they're not as good as a really good kicker. Um, now, the punting accuracy, punting power, punting power. Um, once again, I had one of the best punters when I used these sliders and like kind of adjusted them. 51 seemed to be really good for power. Punt accuracy, like yes, like when you have a really good punter, this punter accuracy is going to make it so like, yes, they're going to be really accurate versus a 78 overall punter. It's like his accuracy is going to be okay but it definitely has some room to improve because, you know, he's not the best type of punter. The kickoff power, 
in the NFL nowadays, the kickers try to kick it way, like they do not want that ball going into play. So 54, uh, 54 as an actual slider here is perfect. They kick it out sometimes, not all the time. Um, and it's really, really good. Now for injuries, I did take it down to 15. I was coming across a lot of injuries in my Madden 23 slider. So I took it down a couple notches to 15. You're still gonna get some injuries like you should, but it's not gonna be nearly as much. If you have like a 99 overall player with like 91 toughness, 91 uh, injury, it's gonna make sure that yes, he might get hurt, but most likely he's gonna be okay. The fatigue, this is the one thing that I've had a lot of kind of, I've been messing around with it a lot. From what I found, 65 seems to be the sweet spot because with previous sliders that I've done, when you get into the playoffs, you're playing against a lot of backup players with the AI because they don't know how to properly do the weekly training. They do full pads every time. And so they tend to not be able to, like, they don't have the stamina and they're very fatigued by the end of the season. With 65 fatigue, yes, like, you're going to have some guys that are going to have to get, like, substituted in a lot if they're the AI but you're still going to be able to face in the Super Bowl a lot of the starter players and it's actually going to be competitive. I figured out that after I changed this slider to 65, I was having a lot more um, competition in the actual playoffs and like in the Super Bowl and stuff. So I kept it like this. This is what I think is the sweet spot. And then the mini player speed threshold. This is the ratio between wide receivers and cornerbacks and their actual separation. I haven't touched this at all. I think it's really good as it is because you have speed guys that will beat slower guys but not significantly if you have a 96 speed corner versus a 98 speed wide receiver. That's still going to be a pretty good competition. 48 speed is good. They're not going to get burnt all the time. It's going to be sometimes. It's really just kind of like you're really kind of just putting a bet on it if you're wide receiver. You have to really think your wide receiver is going to burn a guy. It's not guaranteed every single time, so that's what I like. When we look at the penalties, offsides, I have it 75 false start 75, holding 45, face mask 57, and the defensive pass interference I have at 70. Um, pass interference is the one thing I really try to focus on. I think 70 out of 99 is a really, really good rate for you guys. Um, and then the rest of these sliders, um, obviously roughing the passer, I have at 40 out of 99, and then illegal block in the back. That doesn't happen too, too often. I've seen it maybe a couple times per season. 50 out of 99 seems to be really, really good. Uh, roughing the kicker, I have it on. Running into the kicker, I have on. And illegal contact, I have on. So this is the actual gameplay portion of the video. Now we're gonna go into the XP and I'm gonna show you guys just how you can get realistic development out of your players. So obviously what you wanna do, is you wanna press back, you wanna go back to the franchise settings here and then you wanna go to XP sliders. Now the overall idea for the XP sliders is that I wanted to get sliders that like, yes, you're gonna have Wide receivers are going to be able to actually progress like they should. Just pretty much every position needs to be properly distributed. That way you don't have a ton of 99 wide receivers or a ton of 99 quarterbacks. You're going to have that handful of elite. You're going to have that handful of really good like superstar. And then you're going to have the handful of star and normal. Going to the quarterbacks, this is going to affect both the CPU and your user teams. I have the quarterback at 85. That way, typically you if you have a 99 quarterback, and he starts at like a 75 it's gonna take you a pretty good amount of years like three to four years to even get him up to that 95 to 99 range if he's really good um and it seems to be really good for me the halfback position halfbacks i i had to really adjust this so i put it at 95 out of 300 i felt like 95 running backs before i made the adjustment just, just weren't developing enough so i put it to 95 um tight ends i have at 90 wide receivers i have at 90 uh, fullbacks. Now, fullbacks, I boosted a little bit higher than the halfbacks because I just felt that fullbacks as well, like, yes, they're not a whole lot in the league, but typically if you are a fullback and you're, on a, and you're on an NFL roster, you need to be pretty good at what your job is doing because not a whole lot of fullbacks exist anymore, so if you are a fullback, you need to be pretty good. 105 because fullbacks just never develop in Madden. 105 is perfect. Tackles are put at 93. Guards are put at 90. Uh, for some reason, guards seem to be progressing way faster than tackles do. So I had to boost up the tackles a little higher than the guards to balance it out. And the centers actually don't progress really at all. So I found that 95, it's good. You're gonna have some you're gonna have a center that will progress into the high 80s to mid 90 overall range, depending on their development trait. And it seems to be working really, really well. The same thing with the tackles. I started in one point, I started with an 85 overall tackle. And uh, now he's up to a 93 overall tackle. And that was in the span of four to five years. So you're going to be able to actually develop these guys into capable tackles, guards, centers that are actually going to possibly make the Pro Bowl, possibly get that like star dev uh, or superstar dev. And it seems to be really good. Defensively, I have defensive ends at 90, 
defensive tackles, they do seem to be progressing really quickly as well. So I had to take it down a couple notches from defensive ends to an 88. Um, even with defensive ends, they will progress pretty quickly still. So 90 is a really good slider for them. Um, middle linebackers and outside linebackers, this was a very interesting situation because obviously there aren't a whole lot of really good middle linebackers in the league. And I feel that Madden's default XP sliders kind of represents that. But what they kind of fail at is if you do have a pretty good star dev, like young middle linebacker, he's not going to develop appropriately. So I put it at 115. Outside linebackers are at 100 out of 30. Um, outside linebackers progress like mad because obviously they're kind of, they can rush and also they can cover. So for some reason in Madden, they tend to prog progress more because they get more tackles and they just, they're just kind of all over the field, a little bit more than a middle linebacker is. So I kept it, at, it is at 100. Cornerbacks, I put at 100. Safeties, I put up to 110. Safeties don't progress nearly as well as corners. And so I felt the 110, situ like 110 spot was the best spot to kind of put them at. Free safeties compared to strong safeties. Strong safeties progress way quicker than free safeties do. I cannot explain it. It doesn't make much sense to me. I think it has something with them having to do with constantly being in the box and constantly just getting a little bit more experience on the field because they're constantly making more tackles. They're covering a lot more players. They're just getting more hands-on players. So I feel like because of that, I had to take it down to a 90. They still develop just fine compared to free safeties, and this is a really well-balanced trait. When you look at the kickers and punters, and this is the last slider that we're going to be talking about, uh, kickers and punters that have it the same, they just didn't progress as well as they should. Um, I would constantly be getting kickers or punters that were like 75 overall, and within three or four years, they'd only go up to a 78, if that, if you were lucky. With these sliders, what you're going to see now is that the kickers, if you actually like try to develop them, they can go from a 74 overall kicker to a 79 overall kicker, kicker in a couple of years. It's really nice. Punters, honestly, kind of the same situation. I don't use punters too much just because um, I, I do tend to score a lot in Madden. So punters don't enter the field a whole lot, but they still do progress at least one dev trait a season, maybe two, and it's really nice. Uh, now, with that being said, this has been all of my Madden 23 sliders. I made a couple other videos on this type of stuff. You guys seem to really enjoy it. You guys seem to find this really helpful. So please do make sure to hit that thumbs up button. The more likes we get, the more people that will see this type of content and hopefully subscribe. Like I said before, we are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. And um, I hope you guys really did enjoy this type of content. This is going to be my last like actual gameplay Madden 23 video. Yes, I will be talking about Madden 23 all the way up until Madden 24 is released. But in terms of actually seeing Madden 23 sliders or anything, we are done. We are going to be moving on to Madden 24 from here on out. So make sure to comment down below, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, turn that bell notification on, and I will see you guys next time.